Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back to Hilal TV's coverage of the 15th annual BRIC Summit coming to you from the Santon Convention Center. So a lot of the talk has been about energy, consistent energy. And joining me now is the Minister of Electricity, Dr. Jose Enzo Ramukhopa. Dr. Ramukhopa, thank you so much for joining us here on Hilal TV. No, thank you very much uh, for the invite uh, and greetings to the viewers uh, back at home. Dr. Ramukhopa, um, much of what has been said here uh, during the BRICS uh, summit, especially yesterday during the BRICS forum, is that transition into the green energy. I know you've obviously said that time, time is something that we need, but we're getting there, aren't we? Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, we have committed to uh, the net zero part. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, the nationally determined contributions. Uh, these are voluntary targets we set ourselves on how we see the decarbonization path. Uh, uh, and of course, we have no intention of deviating from that. But the reality of the situation is that we are sitting with a, a, a situation of an energy deficit. Uh, we have uh, many uh, hours of the day where we can't meet the demand. And therefore, we have to introduce what we call load shedding as, a, as an instrument to balance a, a generation and, and demand. And that's why when we came into the office, one of the first uh, resolution we sought was to delay the decommission of the coal-fired power station. Mm. Our view was that you can um, um, erode the capacity in the mm. midst of a capacity deficit. Mm. Really, it doesn't. Uh, it's not a, uh, the most uh, optimal approach to resolving your crisis. And that we need to ramp up the performance of the installed units. Essentially, your coal-fired power station. We must delay those uh, decommissioning, but simultaneously we must address uh, the issues of the emissions levels. And that's why our conversation with the Chinese is particularly important in that regard because they've got some of the latest technologies. First of uh, to extend the life of the power stations without um, uh, exceeding your license uh, emission parameters. And this will typically be the emissions in relation to sulfur dioxide, which is a, a major problem in the uh, ESCOM, uh, ESCOM uh, power station. So we are addressing those within the context of uh, this ag agreement so that we are able to have sufficient generation capacity on stream, we are able to undermine mm. the levels and intensity of load shedding. We get the South African economy going, and parallel to that, we are able to find new generation sources, especially um, wind and uh, and solar. Mm. But for us to be able to achieve that, you need sufficient uh, grid capacity. Mm. Uh, the Chinese have got uh, an installed capacity of renewables bigger than any other country in the world, 688 gigawatts. So they'll be sharing with us uh, what has been their lessons, the lessons and experiences on how you bring new renewable energy on stream. So really this is going to translate into tangible results uh, to the South African uh, population. We'll see the gradual reduction of load shedding and ultimately getting out of this difficult situation. Uh, Dr. Ramukhopa, the obviously the decommissioning of the coal-fired power stations, we've got a community of course in Mpumalanga who really are the heart and soul of uh, coal and You've mentioned it in so many of your press conferences that we can't just alienate this community. So how, and I know you work, of course, with uh, your former colleagues, your, 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 your colleagues, uh, Mr. Gwere Mantashe in the Mineral Resources and Energy Department, and of course, Mr. Praveen Konan in Public Enterprises. So how do we strike that balance in terms of making sure that that community is still there, but also at the same time, we are able to meet the green energy demands, which the future will dictate? Yes, the key word there is a, is a balance. I yes. like the way you are framing it. So it's not a binary conversation. It's not either or we can do both. So that's a coal uh, anchored economy across the, the value chain. So the communities are working in the coal mine, which is a fuel source. They're working in logistics, the tracking of these uh, two power stations. They are working in the um, uh, companies that provide the yellow fleet, uh, uh, both the mining equipment and the, the logistic equipment. They work also in the power stations and also ancillary uh, 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 services to, uh, to this uh, coal economy. Issues around the hospitality, accommodation, the cooking mamas, and all of that security you mentioned. It. So the economy of uh, uh, Mpumalanga is really a coal uh, community. Mm. So it's important that uh, as we have conversation around uh, decarbonization, 
we must be able to expand on what we mean by just transition. So just transition first means that you must democratize the conversation. So we don't go into your communities and tell them what is good for them. Mm. We need to educate them about the ups and downs, uh, the risk associated mm. with coal-fired uh, power station. We need to share with them what are the implications of closing the coal-fired power station, empower them to make uh, their uh, decision because they possess uh, inherent uh, uh, um, uh, agency so they must exercise it. And the second part is uh, to address the socio-economic dimensions of this. Uh, it's one thing to have a, a, an intervention that is predisposed just on the ecolog ecological and environmental mm -hmm. dimension and leave out the livelihoods of people. The fact that the earning capacity of communities is going to be eroded, the fact that the, the economy of that space is going to be decimated, and therefore people are going to go into conditions of poverty. So you need to address that. And then there's a bigger conversation around the, the inability of the South African uh, um, economy to be sustained by the deficit in the generating capacity. We need to close that. We know the models that have been done illustrate the fact that the significant amount of job losses, erosion of uh, the country's GDP. Um, uh, we know that farmers are finding it very difficult to produce. We know that uh, retail um, uh, facilities must spend a lot of money, upfront capital costs, buying generators, the operational costs, buying diesel. Some of them spend upwards of 1.3 billion. They must pass that cost to someone. They are passing it to the end consumer. If you look at the basic basket of food, uh, the share of the basic basket of food on the, the incomes of the poor is disproportionate. So it means that any inflationary pressure is going to devastate the poor. You are just uh, taking them down the road of poverty, hunger, and uh, food insecurity. So the conversation must be balanced. You continue with uh, this uh, uh, coal path, the fossil fuels, you are endangering the lives of uh, communities. Increased emissions, uh, issues of climate change is devastating the poor. Uh, those who are staying in areas of informality, you saw in Etekwini, yes. the floods, uh, the droughts we have seen. So it's important that it's a balanced conversation. Dr. Amukhopa, um, we still have load shedding, and I know obviously it's a challenge that U.S. government are trying to obviously uh, uh, solve out when the given time frame is there. Uh, for the viewers that are watching, how is the the green energy that has been spoken about, the just transition that has been spoken about, try and eradicate load shedding? Because you've mentioned a number of times, President Sal Ramaphosa has mentioned a number of times, that the green energy is not just going to take away load shedding. It's going to be a gradual transition. So can we confidently, as South Africans say, we're kneeling towards the end of load shedding, and can you as government confidently say that the just transition can at least take away load shedding, even if it is for a while, until consistent energy is being given to our grids? Well, maybe just to, to make the point that the, the energy generation mm -hmm. anywhere in the country is anchored on base load. Yes. And base load, I'm talking coal, I'm talking gas, I'm mm. talking hydro, I'm talking nuclear. Mm. And if you look at the integrated resource plan of 2019, mm. that's still part of the mix. We are revising it, we'll come out mm. with the, the proposed uh, energy mix or configuration mm. of, uh, of the mix. So the just energy transition, the issues of renewable energy resources, mm. on their own, they don't resolve load shedding yes. or guarantee your energy security. Mm. They must be seen as part of uh, the totality of mm. the mix. It still relies on the redundancy of, uh, of base load. Mm. And the technology is not as advanced to guarantee you that uh, it's going to approximate base load condition yes. because we know that the solar PV mm. relies on solar. The intensity of solar is uh, after nine until um, uh, nine in the morning after the morning peak mm. and just before the evening peak, it goes away. Mm. And when you are biggest uh, load, you are experiencing it in the evening peak in the mm. most followed by the morning peak and you are not getting that benefit. And that's why that has to be paired with uh, energy storage solution like battery pump storage so that you are able to benefit from the mix and that mix can give you uh, if you like, uh, base load uh, conditions. So we're very far from that, mm. but we're making gradual improvements. We're getting there, but that's not the panacea to mm. resolve our yes. problems. Yes. So it's a combination of these uh, fuel technologies. Dr. Amukhapa, thank you so much for joining us here on Hilal TV. Thank you very much. And that is uh, my conversation with uh, Dr. Jose Ramukhopa, the Minister of Electricity. Do stay tuned to Hilal TV as we continue to bring you coverage of uh, the 
15th annual BRICS Summit happening here at the Saturn Convention Center.